Use the force, Luke. Let go, Luke. The force is strong in this one. Luke, trust me. Well, it's about time I went ahead and upgraded the old QX90 with some performance parts because I'm starting to get pretty good at flying. And guess what? Banggood was nice enough to send me a plethora of performance parts. We've got a two cell 400 milliamp 35C LiPo here. And we've got another flavor of a 2C 600 milliamp hour 25C discharge LiPo here. So I'm going to be playing with those to see which is best. One fits underneath a little bit better, but this one has a higher discharge rate, so we're going to figure out which one's best. And we've got these upgraded motors that can handle the extra voltage of the two cell lipos, no sweat. So we're going to have plenty of power to play with. And I got these buzzers so that if you have a low voltage alarm, this will sound also. You can program it to a switch on your controller. And if you get it lost in high grass or in a tree, whatever, you can flip the switch and it'll start beeping so you can find it easier. So you just some really cool upgrades that I'm excited about. I'm mostly excited about the crazy thrust we're going to get out of these. I've got my thrust test stand all set up with the new motor and the parrot prop mounted in. All right, I'm opening up the Easy GUI ground station. If you're curious what I've got set up here, I've made a video, blam, that explains this whole process. So check that out. It will also Connected. Connected. give you context to how much power this setup puts out compared to the stock QX90 motors. All right, so I'm going to select motor two and we're gonna spin her up so the scale has been zeroed and we're just gonna blast it 45 grams of thrust oh my gosh that's glorious we're gonna go to the ladybird props 27.8 grams of thrust Okay, this motor's got some gumption behind it. Stock QX90 prop. 32.6 grams of thrust. So, as I told you in my earlier video, the Parrot prop is always going to give you more thrust, but on the QX90 frame, you can't fit the Parrot props without them eventually hitting each other. Now, I've seen some people that like bend the arms or the motors out, but those eventually come back in and start hitting. I don't want to mess with that. Before you use these batteries, you must modify the jumper from 1S to 2S. This is easily done by taking a clean soldering tip and wiping it across all three jumpers. It should pull the excess solder off and you should have three individually spaced jumpers. Now put some excess solder on the tip and connect the center jumper with the one on the left side that's labeled 2S. Now you can safely plug in 2S batteries without frying the entire flat controller. This is crucial, so don't forget it. So I've taken the old motors out of the QX90. I've got it down to just the frame. So now I need to solder in the two cell motors into the flat control board and then mount everything back in. I've replaced the micro lossy with the JST. Um, so the micro lossy went to these, but with the bigger batteries like this, one and this one, they use JST connectors, so that's what we're doing with that. All the motor connectors that's forward are negative, so that's just a good thing to remember. Two different rotation motors. Uh, red is positive, blue is negative, and then white is positive and black is negative. It's going to go in just like that. It's easy as that. And then you go ahead and do the red, blue, and then white, black, and then red, blue, and then white, black. And so you're going to do that around for the other three motors. To get the buzzer working, we simply just solder it into the designated buzzer terminals. Can't get any easier than that. The new 2S LiPos can supply up to 8.4 volts, which is well over the recommended voltage for the camera. So instead of soldering it in directly into the battery terminals, we can go over to the opposite corner where there's a DSM connection and tap into the 3.3 and ground terminals. This lower voltage will also help the VTX run cooler.
Now I'm going to very quickly run through my Betaflight settings. Now this is not a tutorial on how to use Betaflight or how to flash or how to tune. I'm just doing this so that you can double check to make sure everything is set up right with your settings. And if you're just curious how I've got all my stuff set up, then take a quick look. If you want to pause, please feel free to do so and copy whatever over that you need to. Make sure that you have VBAT switched on, that way the beeper will tell you if you're getting low on voltage. You can also modify at what point the beeper starts beeping here and all that good voltage monitoring business. The stock PIDs actually work pretty good. The only thing that I've played with is the rates. The main thing that we're changing here that was not already set up is that I'm now setting the beeper that we soldered in to a switch on my controller. So that now I can flip the beeper on and off. That's the biggest thing that I'm changing here and that's what I wanted to show y'all. Once you get these motors soldered in, you want to go ahead and break them in the proper way. The best way to get them all spinning at the same rate is by doing like what I do on the test stand, which is using the Easy GUI app, going into motors, then doing all motors this time instead of just one, and then spinning it up to quarter throttle. And we hold that for two minutes, like I was saying, making sure they don't get hot. And once you've done that, go up to half throttle, and then make sure they get about three minutes of runtime, stopping if they get hot. So now we're connected up, and once you arm it, it lets you know that it's armed, and lets you know when it's disarmed, which is cool. Also, if you lose signal, it should start beeping, telling you that it lost connection. So if something happens and your this turns off and it crashes, you'll be able to find it real easily. God, that's super annoying. Welcome to OpenTX. Oh. Zero. Okay, and once it connects back, the beeper stops. Also, I have it set up for a low voltage alarm so that if this battery gets below a certain voltage before I start damaging the LiPo pack, the beeper starts beeping as well. It's a pretty slick way to just make sure that you don't lose it and that you protect your batteries. I like it and it's a welcome addition to my upgraded QX90. Now we just need to figure out how to get the battery to sit. So what I've figured out is that this one, this giant power 600 milliamp, fits very nicely between the pegs that are already there, which is kind of a, a cool coincidence. This one definitely does not fit, but it's very easy to take these pegs off and then you can put a rubber band around this no problem. We're going to figure out which one works best and I think it's time to go fly this thing. Yes!
Okay, now that I've flown around some, I can kind of give you my opinion on these batteries. Um, it didn't really feel much difference as far as the C rating. I, they were both pretty punchy all the way to the end. Um, I didn't really feel like one battery had a ton more power than the other. This one is heavier than this one. Um, so I guess it's just kind of whatever you want to do. If you like it to fit between the pegs, go for that one. If you don't really care and you just want a smaller battery pack that's lighter, go for that one. Or get both. I mean, it doesn't really matter. So I couldn't really tell the difference as far as power or flight characteristics with either of the batteries. But when I took the batteries off of the quadcopter after I flew, put them on the charger, I noticed some differences. So the silver dual sky 400 milliamp hour battery, uh, I fully charged it, ran it for five minutes in the video. Uh, when I was done, I pulled it off the quad and the voltage of both cells was 7.49 volts. Individually, 3.74 and 3.7 volts for each of those two cells. Um, when I charged it back, it put 365 ma back in it. So this one was 91% drained and it was still flying around. I didn't really notice any loss in power. So that's pretty spectacular. Um, on the blue giant power 600 milliamp pack, um, again, fully charged this one, flew for five minutes. When I got done flying, I pulled it off the um, QX90 and put it on the charger. Um, it was 7.53 volts for both cells. Uh, 3.77 and 3.75 for each individual cell and then um, I put 385 mAh back into it. This one 365 mAh was drained out and this one 385 mAh. So that's a pretty good uh, demonstration of how the test was equal on both of the batteries. But that's only 64% of the 600 mAh battery capacity. So I could have kept flying for quite a bit longer. That is the big difference between these two batteries. The main thing that I'm going to be pushing is that these motors are phenomenal so much more power. Um, I trust this outside a lot better. Um, I did a punch out test outside, which I'll show you here. And it was just obnoxiously more powerful than what I was running with the stock motors on the stock single cell lipos. So if you're, if you're looking for some performance upgrades from your QX90 and you're just trying to do one or two things, I would suggest going with the motors and the batteries above anything else because that makes the biggest difference. I'm happy with these upgrades. I'm definitely going to be looking for more and more power. I'm not sure what else I can do to this. I'm going to be playing with um, different prop combinations. I'm working on my own frame that will accommodate the Parrot props. So I'm excited to get all of these parts into a, a little bit of a bigger frame that can accommodate the bigger props and then see um, how much more power I have with that. Anyways, guys, I appreciate y'all tagging along for this adventure. I hope this was educational. I hope you learned something. If you liked the video, click the like button. If you have any questions, put it down in the comments below. And as always, I will see you next time.